Collapsing bee colonies, we explore what's killing Canadian bees with a farmer and a beekeeper, and whether there's anything that can be done to stop it. I'm Afan Chaudhary. Welcome to Globe Now. If you talk to beekeepers, they say they are in a crisis. Check out this stat. 58% of honeybee colonies in Ontario did not make it through the winter. A normal death rate is 15%. Well, this has left many thinking. Something is not quite right. And pesticides used by farmers are being blamed. Well, in Ontario, uh, the province is moving to limit the use of neonicotinoid pesticides, the first Canadian province to do so. But where does this leave farmers? Joining us now is Henry Van Ankum, chair of the Grain Farmers of Ontario. He has a farm in Alma where he grows grain, corn and soya beans. Welcome, Henry. How do you, you feel that this particular class of pesticide is the focus of trying to reverse bee deaths? Well, uh, certainly we, we know that this class of pesticide has been a, a very valuable tool uh, for corn and soybean farmers in the province. As this issue came to light uh, over the last couple of years and, and, and the suggestion that, that there may be a link between this pesticide and, and the health of pollinators in the environment, certainly... Uh, as farmers, we were very concerned about this and have been uh, looking into this significantly. What would be the impact on farmers if they had to apply for a permit? The idea of uh, licensing or permitting, uh, I think, raises a, a lot of challenges simply because uh, this insecticide uh, gives our plants protection from soil-borne pests. Uh, but at this time, it's difficult to anticipate in which field situation we'll need the protection. So uh, until we can further develop some diagnostic tools, it, it's very difficult to predict where we will need this uh, protection on our seeds. How much do you sympathize with beekeepers, many of whom link the collapse of bee colonies with the use of pesticides? Well, certainly I, I sympathize with any, any producer who is experiencing challenges in their production. At the same time, uh, I think we know that, that the health of pollinators is a very complex issue. We have to be careful not to jump to conclusions and, and, and make scientific decisions. Uh, so, I mean, uh, do you doubt some of the science around the connection between pesticides and bee deaths? Well, from what I see, there's a real divergence of opinion mm -hmm. uh, within the beekeeping community as well uh, as amongst researchers uh, as far as the overall significance uh, of this class of insecticide on the health of pollinators. I mean, if we look at Europe, for example, farmers there are facing a ban on some pesticides linked to bee deaths. I mean, what would be the impact of that if implemented in Ontario? Well, the, the ban would potentially be significant to uh, a very large industry in Ontario, uh, a grain production. We know that by coating uh, the seeds we plant with insecticide uh, gives uh, excellent protection for our, our plants uh, from these soil-borne pests. And uh, without those protections, the yield reductions would be significant. And it's that uh, those optimal yield situations uh, can often mean the difference between a profit or a loss for a grain producer. Now, farmers are already taking steps to address this issue. I mean, what is the single most important contribution that farmers in Ontario have made to help limit the impact of pesticides on bees? Well, early on, it was identified that uh, right during the planting season, uh, there is a, a potential for some exposure to bees uh, from, from the dust that escapes from the air mechanism on a corn planter. Many growers have added uh, a deflector to their corn planter to direct that dust uh, to the ground and not have it drift off to the edge of the field where it may land on some pollen from where the bees may feed. Okay, well, thank you so much, Henry. Well, we want to hear from you. How concerned are you about bee deaths? What do you think needs to be done? And how confident are you that the interests of farmers are also being met? Tweet us at Globe Now. From the farming community to the beekeeping community, let's hear from a beekeeper about what they are facing. We traveled to an area northwest of Toronto to meet a member of the Ontario Beekeepers Association. Here is someone who directly links the drop in his business to pesticides. Take a look. At the Toronto airport, if all the pilots had varying degrees of brain damage, it wouldn't take long to notice there's a big problem, and there is a big problem in the bee yards in Ontario. I'm Tibor Sabo. I'm a third generation beekeeper. Um, I'm a queen producer, and uh, I'm the vice president of the Ontario Beekeepers Association. Just a few short years ago, we used to produce 1,000 full-size bee colonies every summer, and now we're happy if we can produce 250. 
It's the neonicotinoid insecticides. That's what's called the thing that can collapse of the colonies. 99% of corn and 65% approximately of soybean seed is treated with the neonicotinoid insecticides. A lot of the plants in the environment around the fields that are treated eventually pick up these chemicals. And if any of those are attractive to bees for pollen or nectar, the bees will be exposed to these toxins. In small amounts, it causes brain damage, and in larger amounts, the brain damage is to the extent where the bee will go into convulsions and twitching and die. My biggest fear is inaction on this. If, uh, if there's delay and inaction, then uh, the beekeepers can't survive any longer. Uh, there will not be an industry in Ontario. Well, that's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. How, how convinced are you that bees are facing a man-made crisis? In other words, do you think pesticides are what causing the decline? And how confident are you that a solution can be found that protects the interests of farmers and beekeepers? Tweet us at Globe Now. I'm Afan Chaudhary. Thanks for watching.